Hello, everybody. This is Out of Order. My name is Anthony Buono. My name is Ben Mayer. And today we are going to be talking about the UAW, the United Auto Workers Union. Mm. Specifically, I want to talk about the president, Sean Fain, and an opinion piece that he wrote in uh, a, a magazine called In These Times. And what he's calling for here, and we're filming this on the correct vi- on the correct day, he's calling for a general strike. May 1st, 2028. Okay. And the way he wants to organize this is he's calling on every union to have their contracts expire on midnight, April 30th, 2028, the day before May Day. Okay. And he talks about the history of May Day, and it's important because I I, I work in in an international company, Hmm. and nobody who who I work with who lives outside of the United States is working today. It's a bank holiday. Why? Because it's May Day. May Day is International Worker Solidarity Day. The United States is the only major power that does not celebrate this day. We're the only one. We do have Labor Day, yes, which is which our is, version of it. It's I think. not actually a version. That's a whole actual. It's a, there's a long history behind this. Okay. But it was actually a way to subvert May Day hmm. and Labor Day. It's a whole thing. Okay. Um. So and Sean Fain actually talks about the history of May Day and the history of the American labor movement, and it makes me really happy and proud that such a prominent labor leader is so aware and cognizant and excited to share the labor history of this country. Mm. Um, He talks about the Haymarket bombings of 1866, which is a vital aspect of U.S. history that not enough people know about. Um, It happened at the streets of Chicago um, when union and workers across the city were organizing for an eight-hour workday. At one point during the demonstration, a bomb exploded in Chicago's Haymarket Square during a clash between workers and police on May 4th, 1886, and ended up killing several police officers and others. Hmm. Um, Sean Fain calls it out as it is. He says a sham trial happened next, and it was. It was a sham trial, and several labor leaders were put to death afterwards. Wow. Several of America's most prominent labor leaders were put to death. Um, The Haymarket martyrs went international. It inspired people across the world. Hmm. And these countries, these Haymarket martyrs is what inspired the celebration of May Day. Okay. But not in this country. And he says this, quote, The billionaire class and their political lackeys have done everything they can to white out the true history of the working class in our country. And he's making it explicitly clear that the working class didn't just get decent wages out of nowhere. The better benefits and the safe working conditions didn't get gifted to them Mm. from those above. He makes it clear that every improvement made at the workplace, every cost of living increase, every healthcare plan, all of these things Mm. have have only happened through the tireless sacrifice of the working class and those who organize them. And because of this, he's making it so evidently clear that organizing is where workers get their power. Um, he cites the UAW strike against the big three this year. And he talks about how the UAW didn't strike alone. Mm. They partnered up with the Teamsters and the Teamsters pledged that no truck driver by a Teamster would deliver parts to a big three facility that was currently under UAW strike. And because of (laughs) that cooperation between the UAW and the Teamsters, they were able to put the, the, they were able to put the knife that much deeper into the big three Mm -hmm. and have that much more leverage over them. And so Sean Fain asks the vital question in this piece. He asks if we can imagine what would happen if the working class uses that power on a national scale. If the SEIU, if the AFL-CIO and the, 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 um, the airplane unions and all of these unions struck at the same time on the same day with the same purpose, with the same goal, Mm -hmm. what would happen then? And it's a really powerful question. Um, and it's not new to American history. And so now I'm going to do a little bit of a history lesson here. Um, I want to talk about the great upheaval of 1877, also known as the great railroad strike. Um, it started in 1877 when the Baltimore, Baltimore and Ohio railroad cut wages for a third time in one year. This is following the panic of 1873, massive economic depression. I think it's during the presidency of Martin Van Buren. Mm. Nope, it's not during the presidency of Martin Van Buren. Maybe Rutherford B. Hayes, I think. Um, or maybe 77 was... It? Anyway, no, no, no. S- Hayes was the president in 77. 73 was not Hayes. I don't remember who it was. Let's see. Let's see. I'll Let's figure it out. Who was the president in 1973? 1873. 1873. Who was it? Um, you should keep talking about okay. something else. So this cut to their wages 
It led to the largest labor strike yet seen in the nation. It was Grant. It was Grant. There we go. It spread to close to a dozen states. A dozen states experienced this strike, and 100 people died in total. This The coal miners, so originally it was the railroad workers of the Baltimore um, and Ohio Railroad that went on strike. Okay. But after it became so widespread, the coal miners union decided to do everything they could to stop trains from running as long as the strike lasted. Okay. They withheld coal going to these train companies. In St. Louis, Missouri, 6,000 workers gathered to block the railroad crossing. Not just six, but not just workers of the railroad, 6,000 workers in the city of St. Louis, Mm -hmm. right? They did everything they could to block the railroad crossing. Eventually, federal troops started clearing the way. And they were, while they were being relentlessly stoned by the crowd, finally, the soldiers fired outright and they killed 20 people in five minutes at this railroad crossing. Wow. Politicians were getting fearful because you have to remember where we're at in the year of 1877. 1877 is only six years after the Paris Commune Revolution of 1871. That's the first communist revolution in world history. It's 1871 in the Paris Commune. And there were papers of politicians writing to each other saying, is this the Paris Commune? Is St. Louis experiencing the Paris Commune right now? Mm. Are we having another revolution? Um, And it freaked the upper class of America. The way it ended wasn't some radical revolution, but what it did do was it won concessions. It gave pause to all would-be wage cuts in the future, and it stopped that wage cut from the Baltimore and Ohio train uh, company. And all of that is because of worker solidarity. It's because of the workers in St. Louis who showed up to block the railroad. It's from the coal miners union that stopped the fuel that was going to the trains. And in this, and it, and in the same way that the UAW relied on the Teamsters not to deliver parts to their striking facilities. Because these unions can work together, we and the working class can put the strain on capital enough to make our demands heard and won. So that's what's trying to be done by Sean Fain. He wants May, he wants the May Day contract expiration date to be designed to lead to a general strike across the country. It could totally change the nation if successful. Yeah. It could totally change the nation. I, oh, it feels like I, we were talking about this off camera. It feels like part of the pivot point yeah. that we're currently at, right? The labor movement. This feels like a chance to build like a general strike is is moving in the direction of a Scandinavian social democratic model. Model. Yeah. And, and this is the best way, I think, to organize an economy to balance power between owners, shareholders, executives, and the working class. Yeah. Because you need it to be a balance. And people and this is the problem with communism is the idea that you don't want any balance, that you want all of the power in the hands of the workers. And that never ends up working. But you also need strong enough worker power so that owners and executives don't treat their workers like garbage. Yeah, and this is on the right path to yes. a more liberal and progressive and leftist America. Yeah. Yes. And no matter what, liberals, progressives, and leftists can all get behind the union movement, period, full stop. Right? Absolutely. And so I think this is a really great thing to see, and I love seeing Sean Fain so connected to the history of the country. Yeah. That's what makes me so optimistic because he knows these things yes. I, he, do, he doesn't sound like an out of touch union boss no. he sounds like a guy who knows what he wants and knows how to get it because he's read how they got it in the past and he knows and it feels good yes and it's it's very strategic yes. to plant this seed four years exactly. in advance he says it's like they don't come out of nowhere general strikes don't start online yes they start by organizing planning four years down this is how you do it and it's coming from the top the president of the uaw the lead union in the u.s this is exactly how you would expect it to get kicked off for this to actually happen in 2028 and then maybe we will have a may day celebration in 2028 thanks for watching this episode of out of order love it that you made it this far this week on patreon we've got an update in the montana senate race with john tester got the u.s and the taiwan navies doing joint exercises And the Biden administration has revoked a license to sell semiconductors to Chinese company Huawei. In addition to that, we have our deep dive this week on Chinese overproduction. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it a threat to global markets or a positive? Well, find out on our Friday video.